Let me take some uh, initial thoughts also from Beatrice. Beatrice, uh, your thoughts on the situation, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, good morning, Kemeni, and, and good morning to our cherished viewers. I, before I express my thoughts on this, I want to say a very big thank you to the people of the Bono East and the Bono regions. We came back yesterday after spending 11 days uh -huh. in these regions. <coughs> campaigning and selling our policies. And it's, it's quite sad that while the NDC was in the Bono East and the Bono regions, telling the people on what we can do to revive the dead cocoa industries and how farmlands are being used for galamse purposes, we have to come back to Accra and talk about government duplicity and complicity in the Galamse fight. You know, let's not pretend and means words as if there are some people doing Galamse. And then the expectation is that governments will be fighting those people. The fact is that government is doing Galamse. And you cannot expect government to fight government. Where does it happen? Why are we pretending? Why are we being sanctimonious? Why are we making it look like this whole fight against Galamse is some unscrupulous citizen somewhere and, and citizens are doing something and government is fighting? Government is the Galamse campaign itself. From the presidency to the cleaner in the MPP, they are engaged in Galamse. So let's not make it look like there is a fight against Galamse. That sounds like you're saying everybody in government. Everybody in government is complicit from the presidency to the very last person in the MPP. And, and I can show you. So let, let, me, let, me, let me show you. Please do. First of all, this government did not set out to fight Galamse. This government had no intention, howsoever described, to fight Galamse. And so it's, it's, it's a form of gaslighting. If anybody will want us to believe that this government started a fight against Galamse, the fight against Galamse was started by the media. We've all, we were all in this country in 2017. This government did not set out to fight Galamse. When the media started the fight against Galamse and began to uncover that the people behind Galamse are political appointees of this government and party executives of the MPP, to cover up for the shame, the government then said that we needed to do something. And so they began to put up appearances as if they were fighting Galamse. And unfortunately, Major Mahama lost his life, believing that government was indeed fighting Galamse. We have a very good source of reference, which is the professor from Pom Watson's report, uh -huh. which is the interministerial committee that was formed as a sham to fight the Galamse. In that report, Kemeni, on page three of that report, Professor Frimpong Watson's committee stated that as a committee responsible for fighting Galamse, what they had found was that as far back as 2018, who was in government in 2018? Less than two years of this government being in power, they had given mining leases to companies to mine in all 47 forests. It's on page three. Please let's reference and read. So the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, the Forestry Commission, gave mining leases to companies to mine in the 47 forest reserves. The forest reserve that President Rawlings came to meet. The forest reserve that President Kufour, even an MPP presidency, came to meet. The forest reserve that President Mills came to meet and President Mahama came to meet. They thought that everybody was, excuse me to say, stupid. They are so wise. And so they gave mining leases to companies. And you see, assuming these were even 
established companies who can engage in reclamation or that we can even have some decent discussion. Some of these companies did not even have mining leases, like Akunta Mining. That's going to the Tamubrim Forest Reserve and started mining. When the issue came up, the minister responsible said that Akunta Mining had no such lease and Akunta Mining is owned by the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the MPP, Chairman Moon to me. He is a very known face. So who is government fighting? You are asking Nanado to go and fight because even before we could even settle on the matter, the president came out to say that Akunta Mining had not done anything illegal. And the teacher union, NAT, and all these people want government to fight who? Government wants to fight government. Kemeni, we'll, we'll, we'll come to the fight right now. You see, let's not pretend about this. Until we call names out, until we come together as a people and say that never have we experienced political leadership actively involved in Galamse, we will come here every morning. Indeed. We will bring NDC MPP rep. We will be having this discussion. And you and I, we will buy the Fanti Kenke from Central Region that was made from that water we saw. Mm. And we will all die. I pray that the death start from the right people. We are tired. It's, Isn't it it's tiring? Too, it's too early for that, this Beatrice. Week, see, this Beatrice. week, every day on your show, you've been discussing Galamse. Exactly. Why are we pretending we don't know the root cause? I mean, we Why are we just asking questions and making it look like this is just a political discussion? We're adding it on can't to the pressure. be a political discussion. We're, we're adding on, no, and it's not a political discussion. We're adding on to the pressure uh, that is, uh, you know, has reignited at this point. And Beatrice, I'm going to come back to you so that uh, you make a few more. On I, I come back to the point where I talk about. It would appear that every time the N NPP is questioned about Galamase, you deflect. And then you ask, what did the NDC do? What did the NDC do? But for the past eight years, the NPP has had the mandate to be able to deal with this and deal with this concisely and effectively. But here we are having another pressure talk, another roundtable talk. Uh, in this case, this one is a rectangular table <laughs> on Galamse. And so it's only fair that the Ghanaian people ask you, perhaps the Galamse issue is now <coughs> indefensible for the government that you have to continually de deflect on the matter, Ellen. Because if you tell me that... Are you what? doing a one-on-one? -on -one? You <laughs> no, spend from, so much no, from, time on from, it. From, from, you see... No, no, seriously. I, I'm spending too much time yeah. on it. I'll be fairer. Yeah. But, but Ellen will also say that when I'm on here, I don't allow no, her no, to no, talk. She doesn't at, finish. You've been looking at the time. Yeah. Ellen, then I'll come back to you so that you explain you that bit. But, but I'll move on to... You uh, spend 11 minutes on here. Is that the case? Yeah. So you've taken a pen and a paper. Yeah. And <laughs> Ellen, so now you cannot say I haven't been fair with you. You have had more time than everyone else on this table. And we don't have That's time. It's only nine, so, nine so Beatrice, minutes left. Beatrice, I come okay. back to you. So, yeah. Beatrice, I know you want to react to some of the things that no, Ellen has said. I actually said. don't want to. You don't want to. But, you know, in Parliament, when, uh, um, you know, Speaker uh, Sumana Bagbin make that point, he didn't say it was the NPP side. So I'd like to believe that perhaps there are also elements within the NDC who may be engaged in this. Has this been a source of concern to the government? And then also tell us, you, when you were there, the what did you do? I mean, to, to, to the party. Ellen, it was a slip of tongue. I no. apologize. They are not in government. They are not coming. So I they are not coming. Eh? No. They will say otherwise. <laughs> okay, so can I ask you to give me two of the policies Dr. Baumia said we used to fight Galamse. To use to fight Galamsey. Yes. Oh, in, Ellen is here. Ellen can help us. No, no, us. She, she said, she, she said, you, that was no, the question you asked her. I suppose she answered that. No, she, ha no, we will come back to that. So because uh, Nana that. made the point okay. that uh, I was spending too much time on Ellen. And, so I, you, and you I want to be fair ask, with everybody okay. here. So ask your question again. Uh, so again, if, if we want to talk about that, I know that in their manifesto, they have spoken about regular, regularizing and ensuring that the small scale miners, uh, you know, ethically mine. Right, they have spoken about that creating a ethical mining? creating a community, you know. <laughs> what is ethical mining? Please answer my question. <laughs> okay, so you ask your question. No, so what I'm saying is that for as long as uh, the speaker did not identify and say that it is NPP 
uh, MPs <coughs> who, are, who are mining, but said that he knows there are people in this house. It presupposes that there could be people also on the NDC side. Is that a source of worry to, you know, the, the party? You, you see, and, and then also you tell us what you people you did see, while you went. It's a very convenient and yet lame excuse for anybody to bring in the NDC any time we have to talk about Galamse. Huh? What is the responsibility of a government? Mm -hmm. The responsibility of a government is to fight the Galamse. It matters not who is involved in the Galamse. Or we are saying that if we get to the Galamse site and we find that the owner is NDC, we leave the owner because there are MPP people engaged in Galamse. Is that the logic? I want to understand. Is that the logic? I mean, nobody reasonable, no sensible person, excuse me to say, would make this argument. I mean, could MPs from your side be engaged nobody in Galamse? Nobody should make that argument. You know why? Mm -hmm. We have a menace that is threatening our lives. This government is complicit, affirmed by members of the government itself. And the government excuses that there are some NDC people engaged in Ghanlam say, my goodness. So, so what? I don't think that's what she said. No, it's not about her. Uh, this morning, my, my is the speaker, is speaker who said that all of speaker you are involved. said that there are people in the house engaged in Galamse. And I'm saying that we it can get. It is the responsibility of the government to fight the people in the house, out of the house, and anywhere they are located in the fight against Galamse. So where comes in this NDC MPP? No, but, but I'm saying that. Can you say here that NDC MPs are also not I don't know of any. The reports that were submitted, the fourth estate report, uh -huh. and all those other things. Have you had any NDC's name? If you know, say it, and I'll be the first to call out. And let me say this. And this is the reason why there has to be a difference between, and everybody must differentiate. I, I want Ghanaians not to make a mistake of comparing the NDC to the MPP ever. Although we are all political party, we, the NDC, have never set out to destroy this nation as much that the MPP has done, even as contained in the Japadia document, because every government will have its excesses. Mm -hmm. Every government may have its challenges, but never would you find the NDC on a deliberate path to destroy the resources of this nation. When the NDC discovered oil, we were the political party that set up the Heritage Fund in line with the principles of intergenerational equity. That let's not spend all our oil resources and proceeds today. Let's save some for the future. Today, when we had COVID, the MPP wanted to go mm. for that which was meant for generation. So we are not the same. And Kemeni, let me say that. Never at the time, whether President Rawlings' time, President Mills, President Mahama, did you see presidential staffers engage in Galamse? Who born dog that you are the presidency or you are a political appointee under the NDC and you have the effrontery and the temerity to mine? I mean, in the forest or in the river. Did you ever hear some in all the discussion that happened between 2009 to even 2016? Did you ever hear? that appointees or party executives of the NDC were involved in Galamse, you would dare not do that. How, how unimaginable mm. it is that the man who wants to fight corruption, that the man who wants to fight Galamse, that I am following, some way, somehow, we get power, and I am supposed to be the Galamse campaign or party executive. How would he be fighting that? Mm. How would he be fighting? So let's not make this MPP NDC. It is the responsibility of every government at the time they are in power to fight Galamse. They must be responsible enough to accept whether they have failed or they are winning the fight. You see, this Galamse so, fight. So you tell me, eh, when <coughs> the NDC was in, was mm -hmm. in government, mm -hmm. Uh, and I hope that my producer can give us the videos yes, of the comparison. Yes, and, and I wish to play no, that no, video. I've sent it to you. No, you know, wait, Beaches. We also have that video already. So um, I just want to allow my producer to make that video available so that we can show it side by side. So what did you do then? So you let, know, as, let me as, show you as, what we as did. As a party in government. Let me show you what we did. The first thing we did was that we realized that some Ghanaians were using foreigners to mine or engage in illegal mining. 
So the NDC deported more than 12,000 Chinese out of this country, uh -huh. even before they could be found whether they were guilty or not. They deported them back to their country. The NDC embarked on what we call the Alternative Livelihood Program, where we engage people to engage in reclamation of the land by cultivating in excess of 23,000 acres of land. These stories are online for you to check. The NDC engaged in other alternative livelihood calculated to providing, I mean, sources of income to these people. And you know why the fight was not worse? Because at the time, these were not political appointees who were engaged in the galamse. These were the little, little, little people who were, you know, they were not using chamfines and... Oh, she, uh, said, you, she said they were chamfines all she, the time. It, it, it's a... Oh, what? Ellen, see, uh, is that not the see. case? Shamfai's got into this country Please, under President Atta Mills. Don't, okay. don't, no, I wanted don't, her to... Uh, the Shamfai's came under the attack. Very well. Which don't, is, don't, so so, so don't react to that, please. When, I, I apologize. Yeah, she can make her point. You, you make your point quickly, so, so they're and, not going to come in. And let me say that, when it comes to this whole thing about the Galamse fight, we should be very worried as a people that Alistair Mataya says that the president currently has a friend who exports more than $40 million worth of gold monthly out of this country. Where do they get the gold? To export illegally. Al Jazeera made that report and said our president was complicit in this whole Galamse report. You know what the president well, that's said? That's not what they said. In what did they say? He said the he president knows the president. Said he was going to, the lawyer to the president, <laughs> Kwawe Suman, is my very good friend. I'm sure this morning he's watching me. Wrote a letter and said that they will sue Al Jazeera. Indeed. It's almost a year. Where is the suit? Well, you think Al Jazeera that. is a local champion court? If you have ball, see you Al Jazeera. See, what we are talking about, eh, Kemeni, it's a very convenient excuse for the MPP to engage in this MPP NDC. I am telling them, and I am saying this in my capacity as the spokesperson, if there are NDC people engaged in Galamse, please arrest them. If that is what will end the fight for Galamse, mm -hmm. and you are saying that the, your excuse for destroying the water body, so let me ask you, the person of the airline, to give people the right to go into our forest reserve to mine, was this also because people in the NDC were engaged in Galamse? How convenient that excuse. And let me finally say that. This thing about parliament passing ally and the NDC people has 137, it shows that you don't understand how the legislature works. When an ally is laid before parliament, it passes by itself. Mm -hmm. So you can only prevent the laying. And with the 138, how are we supposed to prevent the laying? The man who has the responsibility mm -hmm. To prevent illegal mining and to preserve the forest, has the parliamentarian who do not have the power are the ones supposed to be blamed. This can only happen in Ghana. The people it with responsibility. I hope this is also not part of the Russia Ukraine excuse. This is a third excuse. A government that can never be responsible for itself no, is me, never me. guilty of anything. They do nothing. They see, I, I, you know, the worst thing. In concluding, Napo, who is an embarrassment of a running mate, who anytime he speaks. How do you say that? Yes, let me show you. I, I can give you an example. Anytime he speaks, they have to come and explain. Yesterday, Napo no, no, said, Beatrice, that's too hard. Well, uh, what's hard? That's too hard what's to harsh? call him an embarrassment. Do you know what he called Mahama? Do you know what he called uh, President Mahama? So President are Mahama? we equalizing our I'm, not, I'm asking you. I'm asking what is the measure of harshness? What is the measure of harshness? Are you not embarrassed that since the Rani May started speaking, you cannot tell me one policy proposition he has made. Every time he speaks, the campaign team has to bring a statement to explain. Or you are not angry Very enough. Very Kemeni, well. your tap that when you open, you cannot get pure water. And you have to get water mixed with mud. You are not angry that all of us, our lives are being threatened. The man went to tell the Galamse people that we will return your excavators to you. Mm -hmm. The campaign team, feeling embarrassed, released the statements and said it's false. We are still waiting for the original video. <laughs> Indeed. I just, just quickly on the, you know, the forest reserve issue I had raised earlier. Uh, th this is from uh, Seth Gope from the Fourth Estate. And Ellen, I'm sure you've seen the, uh, uh, you know, investigative report on, on, the, on the mining uh, in this country. Before you go in that, 
She called my my my, my I'd, running mate I'd an give, embarrassment. I'd give you. You want moment. us to get into an embarrassing no, running mate? No, I I think I checked her on. You that. didn't. I did. She should retract I, it. I told. Otherwise, we'll get into embarrassing running mate in this country. No, we we cannot. Do, do you that. want us to do that? No, we we won't do that here. Then I ask you to we, ask we, her we to retract. Here. You can criticize the man, but you don't insult him. I, I have, I have checked on that. No, hang on. You are insulting me. I have checked on that. I have checked on that. So if you want to get into embarrassing no, moments, no, 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 let's not equalize. I've checked on that. Embarrassing uh, flag bearers no, and their running no, mates. No, no, no. I've checked on that. You want us to do that here? I told her she can't say that. I'm very measured in what I say. She can't say that. There is nothing embarrassing. Indeed, indeed. So, so, so this is what this is what he's saying about the, you know, mining in the forest reserves. He talked about. Concessions have been granted in at least four globally significant bio biodiversity areas. And those are the places that I even said that the Minerals Commission had indicated that they couldn't go at all. Those were uh, no-go yes, areas. He talks about the Draw River, uh, yeah, the Boeing Tunnel, New South, and Tunnel Ahria, all in the western region. Four others are also awaiting approval. And then he also says that even for production uh, forest reserves only 2% is allowed for any form of activity, including mining. But today, our Minerals Commission has given over 80% in some cases.